Welcome to the Christian Church on this first day of the week, June the 19th, 2016, a day that is celebrated here in the United States as Father's Day. And I thank God for the father that he has given me. And I thank God that he himself is the perfect father, our heavenly father, our creator. We have earthly fathers which corrected us and did different things and raised us. But it is our heavenly father that gets praise above all. But I just thank God for his grace. I thank God for his mercy. And though my parents were not perfect, and I myself did not raise my kids perfectly, but believe me, my heart of being involved with my kids and wanting to see my kids walk the straight and narrow is something that cannot be denied. Every parent should be thankful for the opportunity to be parents. Many are not living up to their responsibility. But we're supposed to raise our children right, even as our Heavenly Father wants us to grow into His mature, obedient children. Do you understand? God wants you living holy and he wants you to be perfect even as he is perfect and he's given us the way to be perfect trusting in Jesus Christ and obeying the scriptures God himself though you will never be God you will never be absolutely perfect but there's a level of perfection that God has prescribed for us that we can achieve through trusting him and obeying him and repenting of sin. When we see that we've done something contrary to the will of God, we must quickly confess and repent our sin of our sins. Amen? Amen. Because that shows that we are his children. But let me tell you, God gave his only begotten son who lived and died he lived a sinless life. He died on the cross. He shed his blood to wash away our sins. Not just for forgiveness of sins, but to wash them away. That's why I stand vehemently against the perverted doctrines that are being taught in the church such as once saved, always saved. That's why I've stood vehemently against the doctrines that are being taught. People are teaching that the only evidence of the Holy Ghost is someone speaking in another language that they didn't learn through Rosetta Stone or through taking Spanish or any of these other languages that people learn. The evidence of the Holy Ghost is in every believer. And the evidence of the Holy Ghost is the fruit of the Spirit and the changed life. This is something that the Pentecostal Church and the Charismatic Churches do not want you to know because they can't control you when you understand that the Holy Spirit lives in every believer and you don't have to go around faking and you don't have to go around letting someone pressure you because that's not real those that have the real legitimate gift of the Holy Ghost are living according to the fruit of the Spirit okay if you don't understand the language that someone is speaking you can't verify whether it's real or whether it's not real but God knows who's real and God knows who's not real and God has given the real gift of tongues but he has a whole lot of other gifts that he's also giving and every believer will not speak in tongues and every believer will not prophesy but as a whole God's church, those that truly believe, they will cast out devils, they will speak with new tongues, they will do the exploits that the Bible says. But as a whole, these powers and giftings are in the church. Not everybody carries the same gift, but every believer has the Holy Ghost. Every believer. That's why when you sin against God and willfully turn your back, which you still have the free will to choose to do, 
It is a worse punishment than someone who never partook of the Holy Ghost. A person that's never received Jesus has never been a partaker of the Holy Ghost. That's why the one saved, always saved lie is exposed through scripture because they deny free will whether they admit they do or not. Their doctrine denies free will. And they have different levels where they believe that some people get to a place where they will always do God's will. God doesn't force you to do his will. Okay? So they're all arguing a mute point. Because God doesn't take away free will. And God's already spoke of people falling away from the faith and departing. They're not getting plucked out. They're departing. They're willfully, blatantly leaving the kingdom of God and going back into the world and the old life of sin because it feels good to them. Because it brings them some sort of satisfaction. A false satisfaction. Okay? True eternal security is enduring into the end and being safe for all eternity. Not someone falling from the faith. Not someone standing up saying, I confess my sins. I was baptized and nothing can ever happen to me. I can't be removed from the kingdom of God. They have told themselves a deceitful lie. And it comes from Satan, the father of lies. Which tricks and deceives people into serving him and being lost forever. Do you understand? Don't fall into that type of condemnation and trickery. Don't fall into the trickery that allows people to control you and says if you pray enough, if you give enough, if you fast enough, God may give you certain gifts as evidence of his presence. The evidence of his presence is your heart being changed. Mm -hmm. Not a manifestation of any spiritual gift. Though God gives many gifts and has given gifts. And there are scriptures talking about people being filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking with tongues. But they were never put there for someone to start a denomination off of. And yet people have done so. That's why the church has lost so much credibility. Because you got pastors that are appearing to speak in some other language and then going out and committing adultery. That is a blasphemy. That is causing God's name to be used in vain. Do you understand? And there's a terrible, terrible judgment and punishment coming from those who take God's name in vain by appearing to have God's power yet living a life of disobedience and sin. It is dangerous. It is destructive. And many are falling by the wayside. You must walk the stage straight and narrow. You must endure to the end. And you must know that God is here to help you from the minute you confess your sins and repent. It is not water that saves you. It is not any of these things that saves you. It is the word of God. When the Bible talks about being born of water and of the spirit, it's talking about being born of the living water that purifies your heart. Amen? And that comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. Baptism and anything else, if you take it in its truest essence, was supposed to be a symbol, a like figure of an inward change. Not the very means by which you are saved. And only you have to have spiritual discernment to discern the scriptures that deal with these things. When it talks about baptism, doth also now save us, and he that believeth and is baptized, it's talking about an inward conversion, not an outward. But the Pharisees and the hypocrites of this day don't want to hear that because they can't control you once again. If God is dealing with you and you have a personal relationship, no man on this planet can control you. Amen? Amen. Only God. Only God. Only his word. Why do I respect the law? Because the Bible tells me to. As long as the law doesn't contradict God's word. When the law contradicts God's word, I must choose God's word over the law. Do you understand? God's word is greater than any man-made law. And man can't even make law without properly interpreting God's word. You can't 
have a law against murder unless you understand that the Bible already told you thou shalt not kill. You understand? You can't even foster your own laws apart from the scripture. So understand that scripture is what true Christians must follow. Amen. 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 Now we will get into the new information of today. And since today is Father's Day, and like I give an honor unto my earthly father, Thomas L. Newcomb, I am Thomas A. Newcomb. The middle name is what separates me from being a junior. It's because me and my father have different middle names. But he is my father and I must respect him. Whether he's living right or not living right, or whatever he chooses according to the free will of his choice, I must honor him as my father. And I do so in Jesus' name. You understand? Honor your fathers. I had grandfather, I have a grandfather-in-law, Mr. Simon. I give honor unto him. You understand what I'm saying? I have a father-in-law. Mr. Ron here is with you, and I give honor unto him. See, any fatherly figure in your life, you should give honor unto. Doesn't matter if they're living right or they're not living right. You understand what I'm saying? The fact that they are a fatherly figure, you must pay respect on those lines. And the statements that I am making does not speak to whether these people are living right or not right. You understand what I'm saying? We honor them because it's very important the role of a father or a stepfather or father-in-law or a grandfather or a great-grandfather. You understand? But the title of the sermon is dealing with the father and his son Jesus Christ and as Jesus came and Jesus was the express image of the Father the Lord Jehovah God our Father sent his Son Jesus Christ who is God the Son and he sent God the Spirit the Holy Ghost which is our triune God that we serve the one triune God the three are one as the Bible says is whom we serve. You got to understand that just as the Son did what pleased the Father, we, His adopted sons and daughters that are supposed to cry out the Father, must be obedient so that we can live in the likeness of our Lord and Savior and our Heavenly Father. You understand? The Bible says we will be like Jesus Christ, as I'm going to read during this sermon. But I have to lay the groundwork so that you understand that we are not God. We will not become gods. You understand? Like some cults teach. We shall be his sons and daughters, and he shall be our father. And Jesus Christ shall be our Savior. You understand? And Lord, not just Savior, but also Lord. Jesus saying, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I command you? You understand? Let us get into the scripture, but let us pray. We'll be in John chapter 14 to start. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to preach your word. I pray that your spirit will empower me to speak with the anointing and with your grace that I may preach the word with power and compassion and with love and with mercy and then with honesty and integrity that those that are listening here in this room over the phone or those that may hear this sermon when it is posted, Lord willing, may understand that I am just a servant 
wanting to be pleasing to my Father. I must exalt the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I must exalt the Scripture. I must exalt the kingdom of God and the gospel. And that is just my reasonable service. But I must live a holy lifestyle. And I pray that you will help me to preach the true gospel, unadulterated and uncontaminated, so that people will hear the truth and be able to nur be nourished by the truth day by day without any bones to spit out. I ask in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. John chapter number 14. Beginning at verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus is letting you know that if you believe in the Father, you must believe in the Son as well. And you must believe that indeed he is the divine Son of God. That he is Lord along with the Father. Amen? Amen. Not just believing on Jesus. He's more than just a man. He's more than just a prophet. He's more than just a priest. He's more than just a king. He is the Lord of glory. And other religions such as the Muslims and the Jehovah's Witnesses, these people cannot understand the truth that God gave his only begotten son. Don't let it get twisted. Don't let anybody tell you they believe in Jesus, but they don't believe in his divinity. And that he is one with the Father. At the same time, don't let people teach you that Jesus is the Father because he's not. And there's a scripture in this chapter that has been twisted beyond recognition. You understand? People are twisting the scriptures. We're going to clarify it in the midst of showing like father, like son. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know in the way you know. Verse 5 says, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, Show us the Father, and it suffice of us. Verse 9, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father. How sayest thou? Then show us the Father. Believe thou not that I am in the, believest thou not that I am in the Father? And the Father in me, the word, what he said, the words which I, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. Listen to this. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me. For the very works sake, verily, verily, I say unto you, verse 12, says, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works, than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Do you understand? He said, I go unto my Father. So anybody taking verse 9, saying, that Jesus is the Father, because he said, He that has seen me have seen the Father, they are lying. And they have not read or intentionally, blatantly not tried to understand the rest of the word. Because Jesus explains the reason why he said, He that have seen me have seen the Father. He said, Because the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. And then if you don't believe me, believe the works that I do. And he said, We shall do greater works. 
than these that he did because he go unto his father so don't get it talking about amen like father like son what the father does what Jesus saw the father doing in heaven on the day of creation that's how Jesus lived on this earth when he came in the human flesh but Jesus was right there for all eternity in the beginning was the word that was Jesus says John 1 and 1 and the word was with God that means Jesus was with God and the word was God that means they were one you understand doesn't mean that there's no father and son the father and the son have always been unified in heart and spirit and you know who they are so don't let anyone twist you and we'll probably get to that in the midst of tearing down these false doctrines I preached on these things defending the Trinity I'm talking about the Holy Trinity not the counterfeit trinities of the Catholic Church not the counterfeit trinities that are that are being taught in many denominations not understanding that the true triune God is in fact the God that the Bible speaks of it does not speak of just one God that's playing three different roles and that's what people want you to believe that's the same thing as saying that God has no son because no son is his own father amen, amen. no son is his own father I'm saying it again because it's true and it needs to be spoken because it's the truth Jesus had a father but they were so connected so unified the two along with the Holy Ghost meaning three are one so just as Jesus did everything that pleased the father so we as lowercase as sons and daughters need to be pleasing to God by obeying the word and God will give us glorified bodies this is not the body that you will carry for all eternity Bless you. you will get another body you understand mm -hmm. if you're right with God this corruption shall be done away with you understand mm -hmm. and then corruption will be given unto us as a gift from the father and the son you understand yeah. you're gonna have a body that never gets tired never gets sick never cries never feels pain God's gonna give it to you if you're faithful and serving him and respecting the body that he's giving you which he calls the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you what you have of God and you are not your own you are bought with a price the Bible says therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's your body and spirit belongs to God so you must understand Jesus told us not to be troubled Jesus told us that the father has many mansions he's telling us that the father has all kinds of good things and blessings to give us if we obey him that's what the prosperity gospel is meant is missing and we're gonna we're gonna deal with them they're telling you to seek after earthly blessings. God's blessings for you are eternal. Anything you have, I can say I'm blessed because I'm living in a home. I can say I'm blessed because I have indoor plumbing in my home. Do you understand? And I don't have to go in the woods to use the bathroom. I can say I'm blessed because I have food in the refrigerator when there have been times when the refrigerator has been bare. So I can say I'm blessed because of where I am what I have but it doesn't even compare to what God has for us you understand God has mansions on high in heaven not the mansions you see these millionaires and some of these billionaire preachers living in they have so much money that they've hidden from the government and from Forbes magazine do you understand many of them have way more money than they're reporting and letting people know but God knows it all and he's going to deal with it and on Father's Day I'm supposed to treat my kids the way I want my Heavenly Father to treat me 
I want my Heavenly Father to correct me when I'm wrong so that I will not end up in hell. Do you understand? So I correct you when you're wrong so that you will not end up in hell. I tell you right from wrong. The time will come when you will be old enough to make your own decisions out there. And you had better not be in a place where you're rebellious. Because if you're rebellious, you're going to make the wrong decisions. Rebellion is disobedience. When you're blatantly doing what you know to do is wrong. Don't think that you can sneak behind your parents' back and God not see what you're doing. He knows exactly where you are. And I just pray that you get right with God and be right with God because I don't want you to miss heaven. It will break my heart to see that my kids didn't go to heaven because of all the stuff they did that I never found out about. You understand? God sees you at parties. He sees you everywhere you are. When you're with your buddies and your parents aren't around, do you cuss? See, I used to cuss. It was as wrong as the day is long. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I did it. And I repented of it all. I asked God to forgive me of it all. Because my parents didn't know I cussed as bad as I did because I wouldn't dare say a cuss word in front of them without paying for it. I would get spanked in some way, shape, or form. So I didn't cuss around my parents. But I did plenty of it behind their back. Don't be like that. Don't live a life of rebellion because I didn't get nowhere doing it. You know that? I didn't get anywhere doing it. Whatever wrong things I did, I didn't get away with it. And you're not going to get away with the wrong things you do because sooner or later it's going to come back to you. So don't do it. If you don't do it, you don't have to worry about reaping something you didn't sow. Amen? Amen. Amen. As a father, I'm supposed to live. I'm living a changed life. People know I wasn't saved, and now I am. So I don't cuss. So I don't dance to the world's music. Not going to be bobbing my head to it like I used to with my old Walkmans, which nowadays they got these CD players and all this stuff and uh, phones that you can download music on. I had to get this Walkman and put a tape in it to make it work. I listened to a lot of the wrong music. I regret it. I repented of it. God has forgiven me for it. I don't have to walk around in guilt or shame. But when I talk about it, I realize I am ashamed of doing these things. Do you understand? It's the difference between being ashamed to do a wrong and living in shame. When you live in shame, you continually make bad decisions and get into depression. No, I'm not depressed. You understand what I'm saying? Because God has forgiven me and given me his spirit and his word and the ability to preach and teach his word. So I can tell you I did it. I don't have to act like I had it all together. So I can warn you, don't do it. Don't listen to the devil's music. Don't have it bumping in your CD players and on your computer and on your phone downloads and on iTunes. You understand? Don't go get that wicked music. It will destroy your soul. Don't poison your soul. Amen. Amen. Jesus would have me to tell you that if you live a godly life, and stay away from all these different sins out here. That your life will be pretty good on earth. Do you understand? Not getting caught up in the bondage of sin. Doesn't mean people aren't going to treat you wrong. As a Christian, there's always going to be somebody out here who don't like the fact that you're living for Jesus. Because they're being used of the devil. He's destroying them and they want you destroyed. Don't go out like that. Amen? Amen. 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 If you see somebody jumping off a bridge, don't you go. Don't you go. You understand? Yeah. Don't you drown too. Now, if a child falls into the water and you have the ability and you know you can swim and you want to take a chance and it's not too high or too deep, that's a whole nother different story. 
but don't you go after people trying to kill themselves because they'll take you down with them. You understand? You get in there trying to rescue them, they will take you down and you both end up drowning. Don't go out like that. Don't go out like that in life. Somebody offers you a cigarette or a joint, don't smoke it. Don't take it. Somebody offers you beer and alcohol, don't drink it. Don't get started. Many people's lives are ruined. I have family members that have died because their liver was eaten up by alcohol because they drank and drank and drank. Don't you go out like that. Amen? Amen. Don't you do it. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3 and then I'll be closing. Because this is very important. Can't rush these things. 1 John chapter number 3. Wonderful, wonderful promise God has given us. Just like Jesus Christ the Son was like the Heavenly Father, so we as lowercase sons and daughters are going to be like Jesus. We're not going to be Jesus. We're not going to be God. But we will have a lifestyle that resembles our Heavenly Father. You understand? Because he said those that love are are, are, are doing his will. Those that do of righteousness are righteous, even as he is righteous. The Bible doesn't lie. Let me get to the beginning of the chapter because that's my focus here. First John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. God gave us that. And that's lowercase s, because there's only one capital, only begotten s. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know, and I will turn the page, we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now check this out, verse 3. And every man that hath this hope in himself purifieth himself even as he is pure. Sounds like free will to me. Every man that has this hope that we shall be made like Jesus that he will give us glorified bodies that will be able to be in his presence and not be destroyed. That's what that means. See, if God showed up in his brightness and glory, we'd all die because we don't have the type of bodies that can stand the heat and the glory that surrounds Jesus Christ. But God's going to give us a body that will allow us to be in his presence and not be destroyed. Amen? If we live holy. Those that die will receive an eternal body of corruption full of sickness and disease that will never go away and pain that will never go away. That's what hell is about. There's no good time in hell. There will be pain, screaming, crying, and anguish forever and ever and ever, and it never ends. So you need to stop doing those things that are disobedient. Because when you get down there, it's too late to tell God, I'm sorry, forgive me, give me one more chance. You tell God you're sorry for all the evil you've done. Whether we know about it or not, confess your sins to God and change so that you will be saved. So that you will be in heaven. Believe on Jesus Christ and his shed blood at Calvary and the fact that he died and rose again and live a holy life and you'll never have to worry about the gates of hell. You understand? But if you turn back, if you disobey, you have every reason to be afraid and worry. The Bible tells you to fear because you're going to get a judgment worse than before you even came to Jesus. It's two choices. Choose life that you and your seed may live. Amen. Amen. Choose heaven, not hell. Choose God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Don't choose the devil and all of his devils and demons which are going to hell. 
all of the fallen angels are going to hell and everybody that serves the devil without repenting is going to hell don't let it be you the father is telling you in his word that he sent his son he gave his record and like father like son Jesus lived to please the father and like our Lord Jesus Christ so will his followers be in obedience to God the Father but Jesus never repented because Jesus never sinned you understand we have sinned all have sinned the Bible says and falls short of the glory of God but we can repent and God no longer sees us as sinners he sees us as saints so we need to live holy so that we may make heaven our home and there will be one wonderful family gathering in heaven there are many that we may know or may not know that will be in heaven waiting to greet us when we get there you understand that's where I want to be that's where you should want to be and your lifestyle will prove whether you want to be there or not this is what I have for you this is my gift to you is to preach the truth of the word of God so that my family may be saved amen hallelujah glory to God we want to go to heaven so we must live right with God's spirit guiding us so that we may get there trust in the word believe his word repent and understand that Jesus was in fact in the very image of his father but he was not his father his father taught him and he obeyed let us obey the word of God that we may be counted worthy to escape the wrath that is coming upon the world of the ungodly. Amen. 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 Thank you for your time. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to preach this word with your anointing and with your grace. Thank you, Lord, that you're faithful. And that if we trust in you, you will continue to use myself, my wife, my children, and anyone that wants to be used by you for your glory. Mm -hmm. That nobody's job is too big or too small when it comes to the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. I pray that you may extend your grace to those who would hear and those that would obey the truth of the gospel. May they experience the joy and the liberty that you give. You have given us the truth, and your truth has made us free. May we be free to serve you and free to turn from all ungodliness with the power of the Holy Ghost leading us in all truth about who you are and what your true will is for our lives, that we may fulfill it and be counted faithful and worthy in your heavenly kingdom give us mercies traveling mercies protection and direction and correction as we need it i ask in the wonderful name of jesus christ amen god bless you you are dismissed go in this grace praise the lord hallelujah and have a wonderful father's day to the fathers amen